Good. As many of you know, we are blessed to have Dr. and Mrs. Lyle uh, in our midst as our special guests this morning. And um, how many of you, I wonder, how many of you saw the podcast Britton and I did with Dr. Lyle? Would you raise your hand? Good. So many of you did, and uh, I trust that you benefited from that. I, Britton and I both uh, took away many things uh, from that podcast. I mean, the Lord taught us through him, and so we're very thankful for that. If you haven't seen it, you can search for it. Uh, find it on a bunch of the podcast platforms, uh, and you search for it by searching Strength for Life Pensacola. But in addition, we get to hear from Dr. Lyle this morning, uh, as well as this evening. I think Jonathan mentioned all that already. But Dr. Lyle, would you come at this time? He is known as the pro-life doc. Make him feel welcome as he comes, if you would. Thank you, Pastor. Well, good morning, everybody, and it's an honor to be here with you this morning. You are a blessed congregation because you are led by a pastor who knows the word, who is bold to preach the word, and takes the lead in sharing the word. And you should realize that is unfortunately becoming more and more rare these days. So you are a blessed congregation. It was a Sunday just like today, over 25 years ago, probably about 25 years and one month ago that I was in church. I can't remember what the message was, but I had just finished four years of college, four years of medical school, a year of internship, and four years of residency, and I finally had bought a practice. And the practice that I had purchased was actually the largest abortion clinic here in Pensacola. And when I first told my mom, she almost fell over. I said, no because our plan is on day one, we're gonna stop all abortions and we're gonna stop all abortion referrals. Well, we had toured that practice where thousands of babies had died, but I had never been upstairs. It was upstairs where they actually had a surgical suite where for decades they had been taking the lives of babies in the womb. Well, this Sunday was the first time that I actually had a key to that practice and actually had the opportunity. I had seen the ultrasound room, my office, the exam rooms, but I'd never been upstairs. So I walked up those stairs, and this practice is actually on the same road as Pensacola Christian College right there on Bayou Boulevard. And I went up those stairs, and I'll never forget thinking about how many thousands and thousands of women had walked up that set of stairs with a little baby on the inside had then spent 20 minutes upstairs, had a surgery performed, and then walked down another set of stairs without that precious baby on the inside. I'm like, why isn't this people flooded with protesters out front every single day? Why don't we have the churches organizing against this evil? Our goal was to stop the abortions, which we did, but then I thought about the church that I had just left and you know the other churches, and I asked my pastor, I said, People don't understand what's going on right here in Pensacola. We have thousand member churches on our corners. We have a Christian college on the same road as this. Can we do a presentation? So we did a presentation that day and uh, we did another presentation and that went down kind of the, you know, whisper down the lane and we spoke at a lot of other churches here in Pensacola. And we didn't realize it, but that actually started the ministry of Pro-Life Doc. My wife and I, just until election day, we have 24 out-of-state events that will be traveling from Maine to Washington State, Arizona, Florida, Texas, all over the place. And it's a ministry where we are here to teach and train about the preborn, but also to share the message of the gospel. Because in our congregations now, depending on the denomination, we will have 18 to 24 percent of all the men and the women in our congregations where abortion is part of their past. Well, we need to be hearing that abortion is wrong, but we also have a lot of people that are hurting. People are hurting, they need healing. Healing is cured through forgiveness and true forgiveness only comes through the blood of Jesus Christ and the message of the gospel. Message number one needs to be the gospel coming to our church, but message number two needs to be the message about how wrong abortion is and how we need to take a stand. You have a pastor who is taking a stand. One of my favorite movies is Mel Gibson's The Patriot, if you know that movie. And I love the scene 
where they are leaving from church and the men have their muskets and they're getting ready to mount on top of their horses to go and fight the British. And most of our principles here in the United States were actually founded in our congregations and in our churches. That's why we have the freedom to worship. Our rights come from God, but it's the duty of good government to protect those rights. But as the men are gathered together and they're heading off to fight, one of the older men notices that the pastor is also getting ready to fight. And he goes, Reverend? And the pastor turns to him and he says, the role of the sh pastor is to shepherd the flock and at times fight off the wolves. And we are being attacked by wolves and we're gonna be discussing about that tonight and how yes, we need to lead with the gospel, but we need to be warriors to defend the image of God in the womb. Abortion is a spiritual battle. So we need to use our spiritual tools. We need to be engaging in fervent prayer and we need to be engaging with scripture. But it is a battle. This is an attack on the image of God. Genesis 1, 26 that we, it says that we are all created in the image of God. Not the day I deliver you and I've delivered over 5,000 babies and I saw a two month old baby earlier that I had delivered a couple of months ago. But we're not created in the image of God on the day I deliver you, we're created on, in the image of God at that moment of conception. You've seen people burn the American flag. You've seen people burn the flag of Israel. Well, why burn a flag? What good does that do? The American flag is the image that represents the United States. If you hate the United States, you want to destroy the image which represents the United States. The same is true with abortion. Babies in the womb, are created in the image of God. And if you have a hatred for God, you want to destroy that image of God. That's why this is something that we need to be engaged in. We had a pastor's luncheon two weeks ago. We had a great turnout because we had La Hacienda cater it. But we had a pastor's luncheon. And we were hoping to have 15 or 20 pastors at this luncheon to let them know about amendment number four. Your pastor was one of the first to sign up saying, I'm going to be there. We ended up having over 70 pastors, priests, and rabbis at this luncheon to discuss how we need to engage in defending the image of God and to defeat uh, amendment number four, which will be on our ballots in November. And it was a blessing to see that many people there, and your pastor is leading that charge. To have a one-hour podcast on this, po on this topic, God bless a man with that kind of boldness. So did all of the pastors that we contacted show up? No, we contacted pastors from some of our larger churches here in Pensacola, and they said, well, we don't get involved in politics. Well, let me see. Did Moses, we discussed Moses in our Sunday school this morning. Did Moses, when he went to Pharaoh and he says, let my people go, did he get involved in politics? He sure did. How about Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, did they get involved in politics? How about John the Baptist in the New Testament when he went to, to uh, Herod and he says, hey, you're sleeping with your brother's wife, that is wrong. Is that getting involved in politics? Yes. How about Jesus himself going into the temple and throwing over all those, the tables? Was he getting involved in politics? Yes. Paul, did he get involved in politics? Absolutely. Paul went from synagogue to synagogue, would preach the gospel, preach Jesus, and would get the snot beat out of him, and then he would brush himself off, and he'd go off to the next synagogue. When he wrote to the church of Ephesus, and pretend you're the church of Ephesus. Paul himself said, pray for me that I would have the courage to speak as I must. You need to support your pastor for taking such a bold stand and say, pastor, thank you for tending the flock, but also thank you for fighting off the wolves. Tonight, we're taking you to medical school. We're gonna take you to medical school. I'm gonna take you into the operating room. I'm gonna take you into labor and delivery. We're gonna talk about the miracle of life from that moment of creation, but I'm also gonna talk about patients' rights. We treat the babies in the womb as patients. We're gonna talk about how right down the street we have given babies life-saving blood transfusions as early as 18 weeks gestation. Blood that you might have given at a blood drive or over at one blood, we can take that blood, and that is, you know, treating your neighbor as yourself if you are saving the life of a baby in the womb. 
We are now doing open heart surgery, spina bifida corrective surgery, laser vascular surgery. We're even doing brain surgery for babies that are in the womb. Clearly, they are patients, and I'm going to show you animations that we've created for our new curriculum so that you can use these tools to defend the image of God in the womb. Amendment number four will be on our ballots in November 5th, on November 5th. When we took over the practice over in Pensacola, abortion was legal up to 24 weeks gestation. And the will of the people said, this is wrong. We have babies that are surviving at 23 weeks. We have laws that will protect baby sea turtles over on Pensacola Beach. And you can be fined $100,000 and spend a year in jail for just disturbing an unborn sea turtle over on Pensacola Beach. So the will of the people was 24 weeks is evil. We brought that down to 15 weeks with legislative action. As of May 1st, with more legislative action, we actually brought that down to a heartbeat. Les and I spoke over in Tallahassee to members of the House and the Senate, and the House passed it that night. And then two weeks later, the Senate passed it, and that night, Governor Ron DeSantis signed that into law. And we were getting ready to go after the abortion pill. The abortion pill now will kill babies in the womb up to 10 weeks gestation, 64% of all the abortions are with the abortion pill, and it is mail order, and we were ready to attack the abortion pill. But evil cannot rest until it has done what is evil. So all of a sudden we have the Florida uh, ACLU and Planned Parenthood who have now injected over $40 million in amendment number four. Amendment number four would make abortion in Florida not legal up to 24 weeks, but legal up to term, up to the mother's due date. For what reason? For any reason. It is completely against the will of the people, and they are only winning in the polls because of deception. If they were to say, this is an amendment that will allow abortion at any gestational age for any reason, they would not win. But they are deceiving on what amendment number four. The polls are showing, in some of the polls it shows 58%, in some of the polls it shows 62%. 60%, and this will be a constitutionally protected amendment here in the state of Florida. Abortion at any gestational age for any reason, even using your tax dollars to pay for abortions. It is wrong and it is evil. It is an attack on the image of God and the churches need to organize and the churches need to make a stand. My wife and I have brought a lot of material here for you to use. My job is not to just have the abortion discussion be whoever yells the loudest and whoever is the most intimidating wins. No, my job is to provide you with tools, tools that you can use from science and from medicine and from law but most importantly, through Scripture. We treat the preborn as patients, and they have rights, and this is an attack on the image of God, but it's also a message of forgiveness. We have so many people that are hurting in our congregations, and this is going to bring more hurt. But it also goes back to Judges 3, 4, 5, and 6. The children of, the, of Israel were doing evil in the sight of the Lord. What were they doing? They were worshiping idols. They were offering babies up to Molech. We have taken the lives of over 64 million babies here in the United States since 1973. Does that meet the criteria of doing evil in the sight of the Lord? Yeah. Well, what happened when the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord? Did God just say, hey, y'all are on your own, good luck? No, he strengthened their enemies. He delivered them into the hands of their enemies, seven years, 10 years. I believe what Ronald Reagan says, the United States is that shining light up on the hill. We are not just fighting for the babies in the, in the womb. We are not just fighting to give the right information to the moms and dads. We are fighting for the nation that your kids your grandkids and your great grandkids are going to be growing up in. The future of this state and the future of this nation really is going to be depending on how Americans vote this election. So we need to be bold. We need to have the boldness of a man like your pastor. Pat him on the back. Say, thank you, pastor, for fighting the wolves. Thank you for standing up for what is right. And thank you for tending the flock. But thank you for fighting evil. God bless you all, and I can't wait to have you here tonight. We'll do a full presentation of this and more. God bless you.